Harrison, obviously there's a slim margin for error uh, these next few games, you know, right towards the end of the wild card, up towards the top of the division, but every game matters that much more. Can you just put into words how significant these next few games are for you guys as a team? Yeah, you know, I think... You know, we, we have a lot of guys who try to approach every week as the most important week of the season. Um, I think we're maybe more hyper aware of it a little bit now. Um, and so any extra work that we can do, whether that's, you know, on the field after practice, uh, in the training room, in between meetings or after a long day of work, and then, you know, watching a little bit of extra film, I think each guys are trying to put it on their own shoulders to um, ensure that they're the most prepared because, you know, like you said, um, this is the most important week of the season because it's this next one. And um, I think we're more aware of that now. We get to this point of the season. And I'm trying to be a bit of a contrarian here, but to be hyper aware now, as opposed to being hyper aware when you entered the Jacksonville game or, or, or whatever. I mean, what um, people might say, why weren't you hyper aware at that point? Yeah, I mean, I, I, like I mentioned before, I even made my comment is I think we do a good job of that every week, um, and we have. The, very professional players on this team who, you know, hang their hat on that. I know for me personally, I, I approach every practice, every play as if it's my last, you know, especially with the injuries that I had and having to sit out for a year. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think we got enough guys with that mindset that, like I said, every every uh, game is the most important game of the season. The team's done a really good job of talking about being resilient and, 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 and bouncing back from losses um, and, and adversity. Um, is this the point where now with your backs against the wall, where you know we've seen you go up and down, where where it's it's almost I, I, I don't know how else to put it, but almost like put up or shut up time kind of thing, in, in, in the sense that it's time to prove that you are res, a resilient team. So the qu the question is, is, is this the time where you, after talking about how resilient you guys are, yep, and going up and down, is this now the point where you need? Um, I guess I would I would answer with a follow up as a kind of proof to who. I mean, I think that uh, amongst our teammates and you guys have heard from enough guys throughout the weeks with our highs and lows um, that we trust the guys that we have and the most important people are the guys in our locker room. And, um, you know, through the ebbs and flows of the season, I've always trusted that the guy next to me is going to be in his gap. And, um, you know, I, proven to one another amongst our team. You know, my guys have been proving it to me all year that they're bought in. Um, and I hope that they'd say the same things about me that, you know, I, I'm proven that I'm, I'm trying to do everything that I can. Um, and so I think that we're not as concerned with the outside noise as we are with the, the people in our building here, you know. Um, and so um, I hope that answers your question a little bit. You obviously do a lot of community work. Can you give us your thoughts on Bill's Mafia donating over $18,000 within 24 hours to the BIA? Yeah, I mean, I think that We've seen this time and time again, absolutely amazing from our fan base. And that's been a big motivator for me in my four years here to want to get out in the community and do more things is because you see these guys do awesome things like that or donating to Oshai or, you know, with Lamar and Andy Dalton and all these other organizations that they support um, and Tredavious Whites as well. Um, and I think it, it really means a lot and shows how unique um, our fan base is, especially because you know, as you know, probably a lot of those people donating don't necessarily have a bunch of extra cash sitting on hand, but they still want to, you know, make a difference. Um, this one more fre frequently was a, a little comical and funny as well. Uh, I have to, you know, mention that. But at the end of the day, they're, they're raising money for a great cause. So, Harrison, uh, Sean yesterday and, and Leslie on Monday said that the four-man pass rush, the inconsistencies there, uh, have to get create, you know, corrected uh, moving forward. How much of that is individual, just guys winning their one-on-one -on -one matchup versus you guys working collectively together as a four-man group to have success there? Yeah, I mean, you have to work together to, to create a solid pass rush, right? You'll see countless times um, a guy will win clean, but if another guy isn't in his rush lane or his quadrant of the rush, um, guys can escape or at least step up, get the ball out quick. Um, and so that's definitely an area that we want to improve upon. and. Um, you know, we've had the same mindset all year. I think that we're just going to continue to to work our system and our games and have the um, whoever's out there gel together really well, have good rush redundancy and rush overlap, um, as as well as you pointed out too. If you have the one on one, you kind of got to win. Has there been an overlapping theme to maybe when those inconsistencies have popped up that things aren't something isn't clicking uh, in terms of getting home to the passer as often as, as you'd like? Um, not necessarily. I think you know you. It, 
especially on like first and second down, you know, with the element of being a balanced offenses that we've seen, um, you know, there's a different whole mentality when you shift to like a third down, third and long, where you know you're, you're pass rushing. Um, and in those situations, which obviously third downs are extremely important, it's really important that our rush is coordinated and that guys win. Defense as a whole, what goes into preparing for two quarterbacks? And what is, is that a challenge? Like, how do you guys approach it? Yeah, I mean, it's just another thing that we can we can know. You know, we can anticipate who we think that we're going to play this this week. Um, and but you know, they have a kind of two separate offenses, um, but they're still kind of our fundamentals. And so we'll see. Um, you know, we know who's more of a runner. We know who's more of a passer, and, and what type of runs we can see from each um, when they're in the game. So um, just another layer, um, you know, of uh, film study for us and preparation that we're on top of. I mean, just, you know, a very sour taste in our mouths every time we lose. Um, and so you put them back to back, you know, that, that's tough. But um, we're a strong, you know, m mentally strong group who um, has a growth mindset. And so, um, you know, we're excited for the opportunity to go out here in three days and, and go, you know, get a, get a W under our belt, which make us feel a lot better. Um, statistically for this defense, everywhere you look, you guys are top five, top ten. Only. One area of struggle missed tackles. You know, Leonard Fournette said this week after playing you guys, we knew they weren't a good tackling team. Can you talk about that a little bit and just like where the issues have been in that department for you guys as a group? Yeah, um, I mean, that's a little bit harder to break down than like a scheme thing. Um, but I think, you know, we if you turn on our film, you're going to see guys run into the football. That's a characteristic of, of this defense and something that they've preached for a long time. Um, so we have guys rallying and I think, you know, we'll, we'll definitely you know, be working on our pursuit angles. That's so important to near hip and stuff like that. And then, yeah, anytime that you have an opportunity, um, you know, you want to make sure that you, you know, we would call them like missed ops is, is a missed tackle. Um, and so if you're in position to, to take the guy down, do whatever you got to do to get him down. And um, that's, you know, something we, we work angle tackling at practice and stuff like that. So it's something on our radar. <laughs>